Hey everyone, welcome to the support show. Today I wanted to put together a Shapoko 5 movement guide. This should cover the usual suspects that cause machine drift, loss of steps, or some homing issues. Let's start with the motor couplers and the ball screw mounts. Each axis on your Shapoko 5 is driven by a stepper motor connected to a motor coupler connected to a ball screw. All of the following procedures are identical for each axis, so let's break this down while taking a look at our x-axis coupler on the front of the gantry. When looking at the coupler, we see one cylindrical barrel made up of two separate halves. One half is closer to the motor, one half is closer to the ball screw. Each coupler has four screws in total, two socket head cap screws and two grub screws. We want to ensure that all four screws on each coupler are nice and secure. To reach all of the screws on a given coupler, you can either power down the machine and carefully rotate that ball screw by hand to reach all the sides, or you can jog that given axis in one millimeter steps to slowly rotate the coupler as needed. If you're unable to initialize at this point, stop here and watch the support show episode 10 to learn how to virtually home your machine. Also, it's important to note that when you're tightening your couplers, make sure you're using the flat side of your Allen head wrench and not the ball side. We do not want to strip any of these screws. While working on the couplers, you'll want to be sure that the nuts holding the ball screw to the ball screw mount are tight. There is a nut on the outside of the mount, but there is also a nut on the inside of the ball screw mount. We can see this a little more easily on the y-axis. If your ball screw mount hardware becomes loose, you can add a small amount of non-permanent thread locker when reassembling. If your machine is powered on and you're able to move a given axis by hand, this play is known as slop. If you see slop in any given axis, it's important to check the ball nut. Each carriage is held to the ball screw by a ball nut. There are two screws in each ball nut on the top and the bottom. You may see other screw holes here, but the Shapoko 5 only uses the top and the bottom. You'll want to tighten these two screws down to eliminate any gap between the ball nut and the carriage, effectively eliminating any residual slop. It's a little easier to visualize this on the y-axis. Again, we see the two button head cap screws holding the ball nut to the carriage. There is no gap and there is no play in the carriage assembly. If your machine is powered on, you've tightened down the ball nut, but there's still a small amount of play in the x-axis, you might need to tension the carrier plate hardware. Before we begin, it's important to remove the HDZ from the x-axis carrier plate. You can remove the HDZ with these four screws that I'm calling out with my Allen wrench. You'll also want to disconnect your X motor or remove it from the gantry altogether. Once removed, you'll see a whole bunch of hardware attaching your carrier plate to the four individual bearing blocks and the ball nut in the middle. You'll see four sets of four screws in each corner. These go to the individual bearing blocks on those linear rails. If you find loose hardware on these blocks, you'll need to tighten the hardware down. But it's important that we do so carefully over the length over the entire gantry. Think of these red lines as points where you can stop, tighten the screw a quarter turn, and then move on to the next point. If we tighten down this hardware evenly over the entire gantry, we'll know that each bearing block is moving evenly and in parallel with each other, and at no point do they get out of alignment and cause a physical bind. And just a reminder, the clip you're seeing now is more of an example of the points where you can tighten these screws down. You'll really want to make sure that your machine is off, you're doing this by hand, and your HDZ has been removed. If you've made it to the end of the guide and you still need some help, no worries, it's what we're here for. Feel free to send us an email over at support at carbide3d.com and please include a photo, a video, or some kind of information that helps explain the issues that you're running into specifically. Until then, have a great rest of your day.